1969, I was a, a poor PhD student at Tübingen University and I had the opportunity to visit uh, this institute just with a friend. And uh, I was so fascinated by the working facilities here and the atmosphere that I thought that might be a good place to spend a period after finishing my PhD. And then uh, I got money to come here and I think I started in 70, came here in 70. And then uh, after two years, I left for a position first at the university, was there at the, was at the University of Gießen. And then I was uh, at the research institute at Cambridge and came back for another three years here to the um, Ashoff department. And um, then uh, I moved to Frankfurt, where I became professor of metabolic physiology, Frankfurt University. Yeah, the entire institute's work was devoted to circadian rhythms. And uh, this was, at that time, a fascinating field, because it was uh, crowded with theories and facts and people which tried to sort this all out. And I had the impression uh, that I didn't want to jump right into that field, but I wanted to apply the knowledge about circadian rhythms for seasonal acclimation. And I was um, working on seasonal acclimation in small mammals during my first stay here. And, uh, um, one of the uh, discoveries I made at that time was the fact that all small mammals develop brown fat during the winter and produce heat to maintain a constant body temperature. And um, then uh, I became more interested in metabolic regulation, that's why I went to these other places, came back and continued uh, working on seasonal acclimation. In, uh, in small mammals. Of course, I also worked a little bit on, on circadian rhythm in, in birds, um, but uh, that was only a, my minor interest. Very special about the place was um, Ashoff's personality. He was a very uh, enthusiastic person and a very critical person. And what I admired at him when you came to him with just a little piece of paper having your data on, he looked at them and he could produce a story out of a few figures. And uh, I learned quite a lot from him, how to interpret data, how to uh, design experiments, and um, how to sell the results of, uh, of the research. I think he was, uh, he was unbelievable in, in that respect and we all learned a lot from him. Yeah, when I um, started biology at the university, it was uh, the time when Konrad Lorenz still was at work and he was, uh, for many people, the important person. Uh, he gave uh, talks at the university in Munich and at the beginning his uh, talks, uh, his uh, lessons that he gave, they were taken quite skeptically for many students because he mainly made drawings and telling stories about biology, about his work. And at that time, many were not so uh, eager about this. They wanted to hear about pure science as they thought about. And, uh, but very quickly, uh, it became clear that Konrad Lorenz transported all these important things about his uh, theories and about uh, the biology he saw, uh, he, he worked on uh, by uh, telling stories. And from this fascination, uh, for me, I wanted to work uh, there. So I asked for a, a student job at uh, Sevisen with Konrad Lorenz, but it was a pity. They had no space and place for me, so I went to Andex. And this was my first contact with this uh, marvelous place. And yeah, and I stayed for uh, until the end of my PhD work here. And the subject was about uh, temperature regulation, which was at that time Ashoff's uh, uh, second line of uh, interest. Yeah, finally I uh, 
And I uh, surely f immediately felt it, love at this uh, place because it gave, yeah, everyone was more or less free uh, what to do and develop his own ideas. And this was, uh, coming from the university, a very special uh, uh, environment to, to find. Yeah, and then I went um, uh, to other places as um, a postdoc students. So I went to Holland, uh, USA, but always thinking of, of Andex and about these conditions. So I came back, uh, got a position here, and uh, uh, then finally was caught by the interest in circadian and uh, circadian rhythm, which at that time became more and more important. So, and uh, I finally ended up uh, with uh, investigating bird migration, which was a little bit out of the line of, um, uh, of the main stream here. But the really fantastic thing was that even this was accepted and fully supported uh, by uh, people who worked on a little bit different uh, subject. Conditions were so fantastic, so I stayed and uh, did uh, for this place some exotic things. So I went for expeditions uh, to, uh, to Africa, to different countries, and could uh, develop my, uh, really my own uh, field uh, in uh, bird migration, uh, learning about how birds uh, migrate, uh, what's the problem of this, of uh, crossing uh, the Saharan desert, again coming back to the temperature regulation, physiological problems that uh, came uh, were important for these uh, uh, small migrants that we followed from the breeding grounds to the wintering uh, sites. All these things were only uh, possible in an environment that was uh, unique here, giving uh, the different people the freedom uh, to work uh, on their interests, but at the same time setting kind of frame within uh, these uh, work uh, uh, could be done. I'm, I feel as, a, as uh, being, and I always felt as uh, being really happy and uh, glad uh, having had the chance to, to be here and becoming part of this uh, institute. I first uh, met Ashov in an Andex in uh, 1976, I think. And it was just a very short stay in you know, a couple of days. And after that, um, in 1979, uh, I spent uh, three for four weeks in Andex. But actually, I didn't do any research here in Andex. And uh, at that time, I didn't do uh, chronobiology research. But after, after a couple of years, uh, I uh, started uh, involved in the chronobiology research. And at that time, uh, Ash Ashoff visited Sapporo so many times and encouraged us to start our uh, chronobiology research in uh, Japan. And he really contributed to that. And uh, for that memory, I, uh, I think that I should come here today. When I came in 1974 to Andex, my task was to perform sleep studies here in these isolation units in free running studies. And firstly, I was very much impressed <clears throat> to find a very special atmosphere here in this institute, which was mostly created by Professor Ashoff because it was a highly stimulating atmosphere and also it was very relaxed atmosphere. <clears throat> and this was something which I did not found in earlier institutes. And I think uh, this also helped me to uh, conduct these sleep studies in these isolation units, which was somehow a very uh, hard task, but uh, especially with the discussions we had with my colleagues, Ashoff, Wafer and all the others, I think uh, it was very interesting and I always remember this time, having been here in Andex in this Max Planck Institute for Behavioral Physiology. Meine ersten Kontakte kamen über die Vogelwarte Radovzell, die ursprünglich auf Rositten war in der kurischen Nährung und 1946 nach Möggingen-Radovzell gekommen ist. 
Der einer der Leiter war Konrad Lorenz in späteren Jahren und dadurch kam ich in Kontakt mit, der, mit dem Institut, mit dem Max-Planck-Institut für Verhaltensphysiologie. Ich habe mich in den 60er Jahren ungefähr 1964, 65 um eine Praktikantenstelle beworben, kam dann her und musste erst einmal äh, Käfige säubern und Tiere pflegen. Wurde dann von Klaus Hoffmann abgeworben aus Seewiesen hierher nach Erling und studierte dann Zoologie und begann 1967 meine Doktorarbeit hier am Institut und hatte ein sehr, sehr enges Verhältnis natürlich zu allen Mitarbeitern. Unter Klaus Hoffmann war ich hervorragend äh, betreut. Natürlich, äh, Professor Aschow war für mich ein Vorbild, wie man arbeitet und wie er das Ganze hier aufgezogen hat. Ich hatte nach der Promotion dann das Glück, an die Universität Konstanz äh, zu kommen, war dort über 34 Jahre Referent der Fakultät für Biologie, die seit 1972 äh, die Lehre aufbaute. Für mich war Erling immer ein Beispiel, wie man Wissenschaft macht, aber wie man Wissenschaft macht äh, im Team, zu, in Zusammenarbeit, in Besprechungen und nicht nur, äh, würde ich sagen, wie es heute ist am Computer. Für mich in besonderer Erinnerung ist auch der technische Fortschritt, wenn ich daran denke, wie wir die zirkadianen Rhythmen ausgemessen haben und berechnet haben und es heute sehe, wie alles in den Computer geht, alles in Einzelarbeit. Das war, muss ich sagen, ein anderes Art von Leben, die Zusammenarbeit hier in Erling Andex. I came here for the first time in 1970 to visit a friend just on holiday and then I had a chance to look into the to see the institute and I was so deeply impressed that I told him I asked him couldn't I work here for some time I'm almost finished with my PhD in Amsterdam and uh, I would love to uh, to stay here and and to do some work for a couple of years And then he said, oh yes, okay, and then uh, come with me, we go see uh, the director, Professor Ashoff. And Professor Ashoff was here, he had his room right here, next to me. And, um, and he welcomed me, and we had a brief chat, 10, 15 minutes or so. And he said, okay, we go and ask for a Humboldt's type hand. And um, that happened also very quickly. We wrote it, I think, in two days' time uh, while I was here. And, and the next thing I knew was that I got the stipend even before I had finished my PhD. So the first thing when I came here was try and get my PhD finished and written up. And, uh, but I was so happy of coming here. I came from the big city, from Amsterdam. I came into this little hole in, uh, in the middle of nowhere in Bavaria. And I noticed that is in, the, in the first summer, this was summer 71, that I was here, I saw nearly all the people whom I had read papers of. And Before that time, I had never really realized that there were real people behind these papers. I, I had seen their names, I, I saw where they came from, I understood formally that they were existing people on somewhere on, on Earth, but here they gathered all together. One after the other came by here, and in Amsterdam I had never that experience. I came from the deep province into the center of the world. That was the, my overriding feel, uh, feeling. I saw Pittenrick and Menneker and, and all the big names in the field in the, in the first summer when I was here. And the whole atmosphere of the place made me so excited. And that has been, that has determined the rest of my career. I got hooked to this field of biological rhythms. The place was like a mecca for everybody who saw in his data something going up and down. And 
and did not understand why that why that was. And they all came here to Erling Andex to ask for advice and to chat about the data and, and that improved their understanding. And that was the, the beginning of a big droplet of oil which spreads over the water. And so chronobiology, the name was not known then, but biological rhythms research became popular. And that was from this particular center here in Andex. So it has impressed me and it has impressed many other people. The personality of Ashoff and his friend from the United States, Pittenrick. And um, many people got hooked to this because of the personalities of these two people. But Ashoff in very much in particular. I came here probably 40 years on the day. Um, I was 17 a bit younger than now, and um, I went to school with the six out of children, or actually only four because two weren't at the school at that time. And um, from that moment on, it, I think it must have been a, a, one of the famous Fushing Feste. Um, I, I stayed here because I got along with um, the old one very well, and I worked at um, the institute for many years in my school holidays. And very much later, after having studied biology, I came back and I um, went through lots of numbers with Ashraf, which he loved and I loved too. And we did um, an analysis of annual rhythms in humans. And then he kicked me out and he said, you have to go to America. And he wanted to go, wanted me to go to Mike Menica, but I thought I'd go to Woody Hastings. And, um, but from that time on, um, I was always, he was always my mentor. And every paper I wrote and every paper he wrote, um, we went through together and uh, my children grew up so uh, they had uh, they had the feeling that the, the uh, two Ashoff parents were their, uh, their grandparents. And um, well, from that day on, 40 years ago, I was very close to all of the Ashoffs and um, had my place mainly over at the Schloss, but uh, for at least two years also in this building. I came to Andex in 1981 and 1982 for two weeks, a beautiful summer, sailing, eating with the Ashofs, staying in the Schloss, and actually with a scientific purpose of digging out the seasonality of human circadian rhythms once individuals had left the outside world and spent their three, four weeks in the bunker. And that was the reason I came to Andex, but I was not really a rhythm person. I had never really been through all the schools of circadian biology. But having spent these years beforehand growing more and more fascinated with circadian rhythms, the wonderful experience of coming to Andex, seeing how one worked and played and lived in an atmosphere that was so full of discussion and so full of intellectual rigor and yet lots of laughter, lots of beer in the cloister. This made my life and actually I think I've always had a tendency to to have parties like Ashoff and Weber had parties in Andex, getting my friends together, my scientific friends, having big feasts and trying to understand more of the science that we love so much. I visited Andex for the first time in 1974 when I was a medical student. Uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, at that time, just a visit. Um, and later on, I had a chance to, uh, came to come to Germany to uh, extend my studies. And uh, at that time, I was in Göttingen. And, but uh, uh, I was very much uh, like to come um, to here to study something about chronobiology. So I asked the Professor Ashoff whether I, I was able to come here or not. He said yes, so I came here. And I stayed here for uh, five months, uh, stayed in uh, Shiros, uh, one room and did some a little experiment here. 
it's a it's a uh, food restriction experiment in that uh, not related to the human but my real wish is to uh, was to to do some experiment uh, with humans in you know, under isolation of society but uh, when I and came back to Japan, returned to Japan, I built out of a uh, similar isolation facility, not under the ground, but the, uh, the, uh, in the buildings, but uh, it works. And uh, we did uh, uh, some human experiment in Japan, and we uh, keep our communication with Professor Ashof continuously until uh, he's dead. Uh, so uh, uh, this place is for me, uh, so 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 to say, the kind of um, high mark or the uh, 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 for my studies and for my academic careers and uh, everything. So uh, I come here again and uh, had a very nice time and yesterday. The first time I came to Erling Andex was in the year of 1964. I was a subject in the bunker for about four weeks and my conditions were just constant conditions, just light. The next time I came to Erling in 1969, I had to finish my studies and I had to write a diploma work and I suddenly thought, oh, there are a lot of data in Erling Andex and so I drove with my car came to Professor Befer and Ashoff and told them I wanted to write a uh, diploma work, but they didn't know what to write. But they said, okay, stay here and try to find out. And so I finished a study on personality factors and biological rhythm. And it was published in Psychosomatic Medicine. And it was a new aspect, the combination of biology and personality. And so they offered me a position as an assistant and uh, of course I agreed because the institute had such a free atmosphere. It was an institute of the open doors. You could walk into the institute as at the time you wanted. So if you wanted to work during the night time, it was okay. If you didn't want to work during the week, it was okay. And very often Ashov and Weaver drove with us to the mountains and we were skiing in the winter during the week or we were sailing in the week during the week. And at the weekends we were working in the institute, so in the end I think this freedom we had, this openness, uh, helped us really to find our way and in the end to be successful in the further life. <laughs>